Hi friends, today let us learn a topic in pathology that is neoplasia. Neo means new, plasma means growth. So here is the definition of neoplasm, abnormal mass of tissue the growth of which exceeds and is uncoordinated with that of the normal tissues and persists in the same excessive manner after cessation of stimuli which evoke the change. So here in neoplasm it's an abnormal mass of tissue. In a normal cell in the presence of a growth factor the cell keeps on dividing but once the growth factor is removed the cell stops its division. Whereas in case of a cancer cell even if we remove the growth factor the cell's division does not discontinue. That means the division persists. So there is a stimuli which evoke the change that is the growth factor. But even after the cessation of the stimuli that means even if the growth factor is removed the division persists in the same excessive manner and that happens in neoplasm. It is distinct from hyperplasia and repair. That means it's different from hyperplasia. For that we have to know about the salient features of neoplasia. That is irreversible, unregulated and monoclonal. When a cell undergoes some kind of stress, for example during pregnancy, in that case the cell proliferates so that in case of the uterus the smooth muscle proliferates so that it forms large number of cells and that is called hyperplasia. And it is regulated by the physiology of pregnancy. So hyperplasia is regulated whereas neoplasia is unregulated. Also in hyperplasia when she delivers the uterus come back to its normal size that means it's reversible but in neoplasia it's irreversible and also in hyperplasia it's polyclonal proliferation that means multiple cells divide to form large number of cells but in neoplasia it is monoclonal proliferation that means only a single cell is dividing all the tumor cells are formed from a single progenitor cell All the tumor cells are formed from a single progenitor cell or single mother cell. Clonality can be determined by G6PD isoforms. There are many isoforms for G6PD like A, B, C, D, etc. Let's assume. And uh, let's assume that there are four cells of uterus which shown here. Now in each cell, two Variants of G6PD will be inherited one from the father and one from the mother because G6PD is X-linked. But we know that there is inactivation of one X chromosome. So that means only one variant of G6PD can express. So in this example, in the first cell, A isoform is expressed in the second cell B isoform is expressed, in the third cell A isoform is expressed and in the fourth cell B isoform is expressed so they keep the ratio 1 is to 1. Now what happens in hyperplasia? Uh, for example in pregnancy it is polyclonal proliferation that means all the cells will divide so that again they restore the ratio 1 is to 1. But what happens in case of a neoplastic proliferation? In that case only one cell is dividing. In this example the cell which has A isoform is dividing. So what happens? The ratio is disrupted. Now it is not 1 is to 1. So clonality can be determined by G6PD isoforms. 
in biopsy if we uh, find out the ratio 1 is to 1 we can understand it's a polyclonal proliferation otherwise it's a monoclonal proliferation clonality of b cell is determined by immunoglobulin light chain phenotype so in a uh, lymph node let's uh, again take the example these are the four cells in a lymph node so the b cells will express immunoglobulin immunoglobulin will have heavy chain and light chain and light chain in an individual it can be kappa or lambda so the ratio of kappa is to lambda in a person is almost 3 is to 1 and what happens in reactive hyperplasia so in there polyclonal proliferation occurs so that means all the cells will divide so the ratio again it's restored 3 is to 1 but in case of some neoplastic proliferation for example lymphoma this ratio is changed so it's not at all 3 is to 1 because it's monoclonal proliferation only one cell is dividing so here you can see that kappa light chain the cell which express kappa light chain is only dividing so that the ratio is no more 3 is to 1 now let's see the classification of neoplasm it can be a benign or a malignant subtype in a benign tumor it's localized that means there is no invasion or no infiltration also there is no metastasis but in a malignant tumor there is invasion or infiltration to the adjacent structures and organs also in a malignant tumor there is metastasis that means it spread to distant sites but there is an exception in malignant tumor there is no metastasis in basal cell carcinoma and glioma even though histologically they are malignant in a benign tumor it is well differentiated that means newly formed cells resemble the cell of origin whereas there is no differentiation in case of a malignant tumor of course we will be discussing that in detail later and uh, in a benign tumor since uh, there can be some kind of surgical removal that has a good prognosis whereas in a malignant tumor it has a poor prognosis now let's see what are the microscopic components of a neoplasm so here you have parenchyma and stroma and parenchyma is neoplastic component whereas stroma is non neoplastic component the stroma it includes the connective tissue the blood vessels the inflammatory cells like lymphocytes macrophage so that is very important this blood supply is very important for the growth for the survival for the replication of the tumor cells now let's go to a term desmoplasia parenchymal tumor cells may stimulate the formation of an abundant collagenous stroma so in this case a chemical is formed by the parenchyma so that stroma gets more abundant and that term is called desmoplasia usually it's seen in some breast cancer pancreatic cancer also linitis plastica it is a diffuse fibrosis of the wall of stomach in which uh, the stomach it gets a leather bottle appearance so these are the examples of desmoplasia hope you love the session thank you